Hey friends, I'm Scott Hanselman. Uh, this one might be actually computer stuff that they did teach you in school, or at least they should have. Or perhaps they taught it to you in school, but they did it poorly. Either way, it remains something that a lot of people are confused about. Let me switch over to here. We had a new friend tweet me something earlier today, and he said, Hey, do you know of any good video material explaining recursion, stack allocation, and stack overflow? That's a lot. A lot going on there. I said, well, no, I can make one. And I thought I would add it to my list and maybe get to it later this month. But then 200 people liked it. So then the stress is on. So then I have to do it tonight before I go to bed or I will lose my motivation. So let's talk about that. A couple things going on here. A lot of good questions there. So the word stack gets used a lot. Let's think about that. There's stack as in the data structure. Like if you put something in a stack. Data structure. Okay. And we'll talk about that. Then there's stack allocation. Allocating something on the stack. The stack. That's as in memory allocation. Okay. And then there's the stack frame. Concept of a stack frame. The concept of a call stack. Talk about that a little bit. And then there's recursion. And then sometimes the resulting stack overflow. So the word stack here appears multiple times. And each time it kind of builds on top of it. There's the generic concept of the stack as a data structure. There's allocating memory on the memory stack. Then there's stacks as you move through uh, the running of an application. And then there's blowing the stack when you have a stack overflow. So let's see how long it'll take us in one take to get an understanding of this. Now, I'm going to consider this 100 level or early beginning school level explanation. Uh, one could do an entire class on these things and get all the way down into the details. I'll get a little bit into the details, but what I want to give you is an understanding of these terms, to the best of my knowledge, and then enable you to go out there and uh, search the web for the, the little details that you want. I think that these things come up in interview questions a lot, and people think they need to know everything. When any new computer science concept comes up, there's the need to know, there's the should know, there's the nice to know, there's where you start getting into the uh, edge cases or trivia. Everything that you need to know, you should know that a stack is a thing, that it exists. Um, edge cases of stacks and what they call tail call recursion that I'll touch on at the end. People can argue that you should know that or it's nice to know, but honestly, if your job is putting text boxes over data, those are things that it would be nice to be able to Google for. You don't need to know everything about everything. So pick the level that you want to know. Maybe it's here. Maybe it's down here. Maybe you write compilers for a living and you need to know these. But don't feel like you need to know everything just to be a, uh, a programmer. Okay? All right. First, data structures. Let's talk about the stack as a data structure. I made a happy little stack right here. Let me zoom in just a smidge. We'll talk about this. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to put a draw IO over here on the side as well. Let's say we have a stack. You know, what is a, what's a better way to think about a stack? To draw a box. I can do that in a second, but actually, here, let me grab a stack of stuff. Let's say that I'm reading a book. This is a book. I have a stack of books on my desk. And then I'm going to go and I'm going to take another book and I'm going to push this book on top of the stack. And then I'm going to take another book and I'll push it on top of the stack. And another book. Another book. So now I have a stack of books. I want to get to this book here. I can't access. This isn't an array of books. It's a stack of books. If I want to get to these books. It's last in, first out. So pop, pop, pop. Now I'm getting down in the stack. Push something back on. Push something back on. Push something back on. Push and pop. That is a stack. The data structure. So you return back here. Same idea. 
take something, push it onto the stack, push onto the stack, push onto the stack. Let's do that with code. I'm going to move this over here. We're going to think about our stack this way. There we go. Make sure that that's visible. Cool. So I'm going to make a stack of string. Call it a happy stack. Then I made a dump function, this function called dump. I'm going to right click on that in Visual Studio here and say go to definition. And all my dump is going to do is it's going to draw some lines. And then it's going to say what's in the stack. And then it's going to for each. It's going to loop over the stack and then print out everything that's in that stack. Now in this case, I did it the old way in C Sharp now. We'll go like this. There we go. Put a little space, a little extra space there. So we're going to dump our stack. We're going to enumerate over our stack. Now, just like I pushed books, I'm going to push on hello, push on world. I'm going to push on the exclamation point. Then we'll take a look at our stack. We'll say, hey, how many items in our stack? I'm going to dump it out. Then I'm going to pop one thing off the top of the stack, and then I'm going to look at it again. First, let's do that once. Then we'll look at it a little quicker. All right. We said hello world exclamation point. In that order, we have three items in our stack. And look at the order backwards. That came in last. Hello was first. I'm going to pop the last thing off the stack, which was the exclamation point, and now it's gone. So now the stack has two things. Okay. Now in Visual Studio, I can put a breakpoint, and I can hit F5, or I can push the play button, the debug button, start the debugger. A bunch of things will happen. The windows will change. You see right here in our watch window, right here, we have a happy stack with nothing in it. All right, now I'm going to hit FN, which means step over. That's this button right here, step over. I'm going to step to the next line. We still haven't put anything in our stack. Now we're going to push on hello. One item appeared in our stack. Push on world. Look, hello moved down. Hello moved down again. Okay, now we're going to pop. We're going to pop. There's the top of our stack of books, our stack of strings in this case. Pop. Now it's gone. There it is. Dump it out. All right. That is a stack as a type of data, as a data structure. So if we remember the behavior of a stack, that it is last thing in, first thing out, or LIFO, L-I-F-O, last in, first out, then that can help us as we think about stacks of memory, think about stack frames and other kinds of stacks. So that was our first example, stacks as data structure, which we talked about here. Cool. Let's check that off. Cool. Facts. Now, let's look at it in the context of memory. Here I just made a little main, little main application. We say, and actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to just move myself up here. I'll live up here for now. There we go. That's nice. So, I've got some numbers. I'll add them together. They're all living in the scope of these two curly braces. Some people think those look like mustaches, but I don't think so. And then I've got a person, myself, got Anselman, and then I'm going to go ahead and output that person. So I've made a couple variables here, and I've made a variable there. These variables here 
live inside this scope. This one also lives inside this scope. Okay, but this is allocated on what's called the heap. If we go back over here, we think about our execution of our main. Let's say that this is our main here. All right, here's our main. And then we're doing some stuff in there. We made our variable A, B, and C on the stack. And then it looks like we did a person object. Well, that's going to be in a, in a heap, in a pile of memory it's elsewhere. Maybe I'll have the people over here. I could have an array of people or a stack of people. I could have a bunch of stuff over here in the heap. Now, this main here, we call it main, but that could be just a thread thing that we're doing. Let's say I had a couple of threads. Thread one and thread two, thread, thread three. They each get their own stack. They have their own area there, their own scope. They can all use the memory that's in that pile. That means that the value of A, B, and C can be different in each thread. Over here, we might have A is zero, because it's doing one thing. And over here, we could have A is 99, 50, 40, 42, we don't know. If the person on the heap is the same person, if they have a reference to it. That can be a little hard to visualize, a little confusing to visualize, this stuff right here. So let's try this. First, we'll just run this. And I like to run things with a breakpoint. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that over here. And then I'm going to do this, try a little trick. I'm going to start running our application. And I'm going to take my application here. And I'm going to stick it off to the side. And then we're just going to take our splitter. Okay. So our application's here on the left, over, way over there. We're sitting here running our application on line 9. And I'm just going to put my finger on the F10 button, which again, it's this button over here. It's kind of hidden. Step over. I'm going to step over, step over. Step over. See down here in our watch window, nothing really interesting has happened. Our person is null because we haven't made a person yet. All right. We haven't printed anything out over here yet either. And then there's this thing that you get in Visual Studio. I'm going to move myself out of the way here for a second. Put myself over here. There's a thing you get in Visual Studio called Diagnostics Tools. And there's a section here called Memory Usage, and it lets you take a snapshot. It lets you take a picture of your memory. Let's do that. Let's take a picture of our memory. Okay. And then I'm going to go and hit F10. Now we have a person. See our person down here. My age, first and last. And then I'm going to take another picture, snapshot. So now, I've taken a memory picture twice, before and after I made my person. So we go back to here, and we remind ourselves about this situation that we've got. Okay. We have our heap, our pile of memory with our person in it. And we have our thread. In this case, the only thread we really have is the main function. We don't have any threads. So we put this in a heap. I have a nice stack of books. I have lots of stacks of books, individual stacks that I'm working on individually, pushing and popping things on my list. I've got my self-improvement books, I've got my science fiction books, I've got my language books, but then I also have a heap, big old pile of books that I'm just kind of dealing with. Sometimes it gets fragmented, it gets a little messy, but for the most part, I just throw books in the pile. What we can do over here, I can say, huh, let me view this heap. Take a look at what's going on in here. And I can say, what's all the memory? Now, some of this memory is other stuff, because my application is running different things. But remember that we have person. So I want to type in person. And I can say, look, in my pile of things, my pile of memory things, I see that there's one person. It's 40 bytes big. That's cool. Click on that. 
Let's see if it's a, is there a graph? How large is it? Where does it live? Does anyone else care about this thing? I can see that it's a local variable and only one person, one place, one thing has a reference to it in our application. So let's change this app to make it a little bit more interesting. Go back over here and let's make our app more complicated. So here we output a person and we said, hey, cool. I'm going to add another one. So I'm going to output it before and after. So in here, we're going to go and do something cool. We'll pass in our person P. Okay. I haven't made a do something cool yet, so I get a little squiggly there, like it's not spelled right, but it's just telling me that there's no person here. So I'm going to hit control dot, and it's going to pop up a thing that says generate method, and it's going to go and write a do something cool for me. Look at that. That's fun. And our do something cool takes a person. So inside of that, I'm going to say person dot age plus plus. I'm just going to go and increase the age of that person. That person being me. And then I'll check it afterwards. All right, let's do that. Put a breakpoint there. Hit F5. Bounce, 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 bounce. Oops. Go ahead and put that over there again. Bounce, 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 bounce. Okay. So there's my age. And I'm going to say do something cool. Now instead of stepping over that, I want to go inside that. So I'm going to push F11. And that's going to let me step into them in here. I'm going to step into rather than step over. These buttons are getting a little messy. That's because of the way that I have my toolbars set up, and I apologize for that. But F10 and F11 are what you need to remember. So I'm going to hit F11. Now I'm inside there. You watch my instruction pointers telling me that that's the next thing that's going to be executed. All right, now here's our person right there. There's the age. Now we're going to step over and we're going to age plus plus. Remember that the person lives on the heap and right now it exists right here. So I passed in a reference to it. I gave someone a pointer to it. Not a real pointer like C or C++, but a reference. It's an easier pointer. And we're going to say age plus plus. And we see now it's 100. Here's the question. Did I change the age for the person everywhere or just for the person that lives here? Let's find out. We're going to go out. Next line. And look, so we changed the only person. We saw that on the heap, on the big pile of memory, there is a person. And we changed that number for everyone, for anyone who cares about that person. That age just went up. Okay. Now, back here we had this number C, this, this long. Let's change, do something cool. And we're going to pass in a person on the heap and this number C that is on the stack. Push on the stack, push on the stack, push on the stack. The stack only lives within the context of this method. Okay, and it holds it there. So what we're going to do is we're going to go down here. We're going to change our method so that I can pass that in. And then I'm going to say C++. Uh -huh. Not really C++, but still. All right. And then instead of console.write line this stuff, we'll console.write line C. That's what we care about. All right, so we're going to change C, and then we're going to come back, and we're going to see before, then we'll do something cool, and then we'll see after. All right, let's do that. Okay, let's watch down here. We can see that C is 99.
we see that C is 99. Now, I'm going to go and say F10, 10. Now, notice that we have a person here who is 99, and we have the number C that is 99. Now, I'll talk about call stacks in a little bit, but it's worth noting that we're currently in the main application, the main uh, function. It'll F F11. Okay, now we're going to go and say C++. Watch our C right here. Boop. Okay. And we changed our age. Now, here's our stack, our call stack. We were in main, and now we're going to do something cool. Now we're going to leave, do something cool. We're going to come back to main. Let's see what C is. C is 99, not 100. But the age of our person remains 100. That's because the C that we changed the number C, the variable C that we changed, was passed in to this method by value. We gave it a copy of the number 99. We took that number 99. Now we had two. It lived only in the stack inside of that method. We changed only that number, and then that number went away. We pushed all those variables on the stack, we pushed the parameters on the stack, did a bunch of stuff, and then we popped everything off the stack, and now it's gone. We cleaned up after ourselves. But that larger object, that person object, lives on the heap. So when we passed it in, it was passed in by reference. So these items lived in the stack within this context. And this C is a different C that had its value passed in. And then we made a little copy of it there. That created stack here. All right. So that's interesting. You can see the way we can prove those things by using our watch window and by being really thoughtful about what we're doing. So that's cool. And then we talk about stack allocation as in the context of memory allocation. Now I touched a little bit on the stack frame. Let's dig into that for a second. Here I've made a little application that says console.writeline, and then I have three functions, happy, little, and function. And each of those functions returns a string. So then I say, hey, console.writeline, call this function, and then add it to the value, of the return value of this function, and then add it to the return value of that function. So you can imagine what this is going to look like. I'll hit a breakpoint. Push F5. All right, let's hit. F10, F5 again starts my application, F10 steps over. All I'm doing is using the hotkeys that Visual Studio has for me. I'll just remind you of those. This is your F5 start. You can see that it's F5 because it says so right there. My function key 5. And then here we've got step over, which my mouse is in the way of a little bit. And I've got step into. All right. So go back here. F10, happy little function. Cool. Let's actually do that again. I'm going to say F11. There's happy. There's little. There's function. All right, one more time. This time, we're going to pay special attention to our call stack. I'm going to say restart. I want you to watch right here. We're in the main function. We're going to do something tricky here. I'm going to right click on that. I'm going to say show parameter names. And we have frame status. It shows everything that happens in the context of our all stack. This lets you know how deep you go. All right. So we're going to hit F11. We were in main, now we pushed on top of that, and now our call stack isn't happy. We're still in main. You see how we're still up there, but we're also here. We're waiting for this to come back. Now we're going to return happy. Then we pop that off, and now we returned 
that value. See down here. Happy returned happy. Then we're going to go down again. Now we're in little. There's our call stack. Watch our watch window. We just returned little. Now we're going to return the word function. All right. So what happened there? We had a main, and then we ran another function, and we said happy. And then we came back and we did little. Then we came back to main. We said function. So our call stack never got more than too deep. Let's change this. We're going to change this. And what we're going to do is instead of saying happy and then little and then function, we're going to go and we're going to call some different things. I'm going to call one function that I made earlier called happy and. And happy and is going to call little and and pass in happy. And then little and is going to add itself and then it's going to say function and and then it's going to call little. Function and we'll go and take the value passed in, pass in function. So we're going to take the string happy, pass it to little, add a word, pass it to another one, and add that. And we should get the exact same output, happy little function. But we're going to see a deeper call stack. Let's do that. Hit F5. Set my window up there. All right. We're going to watch right here. Start out there, and we're going to say F11. So now, we took our main, we just added happy end. And now we're going to F11 again, and now we've gotten a little deeper. F11 again. Main is down here. You can see it right there. We're still waiting. Happy and is still waiting for little and to return. Little and is still waiting for function and to return. Over here, we can see what's waiting. We're going to go on F11, F11. And we see that the final result is happy little function. And then we're going to go pop, 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 pop. All the way back to here. And the result will pop out right here. Happy little function. Now that is not recursion. That is a slightly deep call stack. Each one of these functions called another, passed things in, and had to wait around until the return let it release. So then the call stack got a little bit deep. That gives you a sense of stack frames, and call stacks. Now, finally, recursion. Isn't this fun? Take a look at this. Let's recurse, get into some trouble, and we're going to have a stack overflow. <laughs> Here we're going to take a number, which is a million. This is a classic example. We have a main, and a main is going to call countdown. And then all countdown is going to do is it's going to say, hey, if zero is greater than, and then it's going to take the number n, and it's going to subtract one. So this million is going to become 999999. Then it's going to call itself. It's going to call itself. So it's going to need to call itself a million times. Set F5. And actually, let's just turn off the breakpoint and let's let it run because I don't want to go and hit my button a million times, do I? Oop. Stack overflow. It looks like it made it about 19,000 times and then it gave up. And we got a stack overflow. That's cool. Oh, I got a nice little exception thing here and a little pop up and a whole deal. Chaos. Stack overflow. What does that mean? Look at our memory. Whoop. Gave up. 
All right. Figure out what's going on. Let's put a break point right here. Let's hit F5. And I want you to watch that call stack. Oops, I'm going to move myself out of the way. There we go. F11. Okay, now we're going to call ourselves. Let's see that number N. I'm just going to add that over here in the watch window. See if we'll see that go down. I'm just going to go F11, F11, 11. Make myself a little smaller. Maybe I'll go up here. Watch our number. I'm just going to hold F11 down. So what we're doing is we're getting deeper and deeper and deeper. Watch, look at this here. Look at that. Look at that scroll bar. What's happening is we are making a stack here of functions as we await, as each function waits for the, na the last one to finish. And it can't unroll and pop everything off that stack because it's waiting. And it's never, ever going to finish. The tail, the, the end of all of this, is only going to happen there. Notice that the countdown method only has one way out. The only way out is when the number zero is greater than the result of that n. So when we hit negative one, then it will return. And then this kind of already ridiculous call stack will unravel and go blah, 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 all the way back off. So what's happening is we are overflowing our stack because uh, programs have only so much stack space. Your heap is as big as your, uh, your processor uh, architecture allows it to be. 32-bit processes have a certain heap size and 64-bit processes have a certain heap size. But your stack is fixed. Again, uh, a little different for 32-bit and 64-bit. You can go and Google for that. But at this point, we have to ask ourselves two things. And this is where we get a little bit advanced. I'm going to let you go off and Google for that because this is about educating yourself, not about me doing 400 level videos. One, was this the right architecture to do this work? Was recursing a good idea? Spoiler alert, no. Second question, maybe it was the compiler's job to have figured that out, seen it coming, and automatically converted that to something a little bit different. For example, what if we change this countdown and we made a better countdown? Let's say this one's a bad one. A better countdown might look like this. And we would pass in our initial value. And that better countdown would just say, well, as long as you can, forever, until it gets done. Now this is, in fact, not ideal, this code right here, but that's what the compiler would generate. There's lots of different ways to go and spin through that for loop, for each, while, wow, doesn't matter. Point is, the instructions that we had before recursed. We got deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper into our methods, waiting for the uh, final tail of that, while this does it without any stack. When I run this, this actually finishes because there's no stack at all. We can prove that doing our breakpoint, hitting F5. We call that method once, and then we just spend all of our time in this method. You see our call stack down here is very simple. So that should give you a sense of X as a data structure. Stack allocation versus heap allocation. Concept of a stack framework, call stack. And then a little bit about recursion and then the results of a stack overflow. Something to watch out for is that some languages, like C Sharp, uh, in different instances, may or may not have uh, what is called tail call optimization. 
that can handle tail call recursion and could theoretically take that and make it better. Figure it out. Do the right thing. Uh, there's a language called F sharp that does that automatically. Every language is different. Uh, C sharp doesn't do that, even though it possibly could. That's advanced stuff. You might want to go and educate yourself about that. But in the course of your average day, you usually won't hit these things unless you're doing some pretty interesting computational work or if you're building an architecture that re relies on um, recursion, like if you're doing a Fibonacci sequence or some advanced math. But there's usually always a way to do it without using so much stack and doing it like this, imperatively. So that's interesting. Cool. So, stacks, thank you very much for watching. This has been, it looks like, how many minutes? 36 minutes. Sorry that was so long. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, the best thing that you can do to help me out is I'm having all kinds of fun with this YouTube is to tell your friends. Also, I'd like to let you know that I made a silly domain for uh, this that will get you directly to the playlist. So if you go and use computer stuff they didn't teach you dot com, it'll just redirect to this playlist. So tell your friends, have them subscribe, and keep sending me your questions, and I'll keep doing videos. Thank you.